Edison, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Armstrong is on the moon, Captain Neil Armstrong, 38-year-old American, standing on the surface of the moon. On this July 20th, 1969. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Seven years old, uh, July 20th, 1969. I'm sitting in my living room in Ohio, and I'm watching as Apollo 11 is making its approach to the moon, 250,000 miles away, and thinking, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. And then to see the Eagle land on the 21st and uh, him step out and make that announcement, you know, one s small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. Aviation itself was entering a brand new uh, era. You know, we had just started with, with jet aircraft and he was a pioneer, or one of a class of pioneers, not just in aviation itself, in near space, but in outer space. And, and the courage, the, uh, the talent, the intellect that it took for gentlemen to be able to go and, and, and take us to the moon um, is just incredible. One of the things my, my daughter wants to do is she wants to be a pilot. Uh, I've been flying since I was uh, 21 years old. And she's just old enough now that she's able to understand what it is that daddy does. And so if I were to explain to her that Neil Armstrong was the first man to walk on the moon, and he was also a naval aviator just like daddy, I, I think she'd understand that there's a connection there. It's March of 2010. I'm deployed on uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower, the aircraft carrier. And uh, he came out as uh, part of a uh, USO tour with uh, other astronauts. He had, because of his timing in the Navy and then starting in the astronaut program, had never been awarded the Naval Astronaut Wings. While he was on board, it was a surprise to him, but uh, the captain of the ship, D. Mewborn, and I was the Air Wing Commander, both got a chance to, uh, to do the presentation for him, and uh, very, very much an honor. Fast forward, and then uh, spring of 2012, he's coming to our headquarters here to do a reunion, a VF-51 reunion. And uh, so as he comes into the headquarters, I greet him and he recognizes me, so we talk for a little bit. And he's with the rest of the, the reunion group with their spouses. He felt that he should get up and introduce me. And I'm, I'm just, you know, humbled by the whole thing. I mean, here's, here's Neil Armstrong introducing, you know, little, little me to his group that he's with. And it was, uh, it was one of those times where you go, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. Knowing that Neil Armstrong was a naval aviator is, is obviously a, a source of pride for a lot of other naval aviators that have followed him. Uh, I can't tell you how many of my friends were posting on Facebook the next day saying, rest in peace, Neil Armstrong. Uh, we're all indebted uh, to him for the things that he did, uh, for the risks that he took, uh, for the risks that other naval aviators have taken in the space program. I've done 40 missions in Iraq and Afghanistan, and it's only half of what Neil Armstrong was able to accomplish. And that was in early aircraft, in early jets, uh, getting shot at uh, pretty much every mission. Uh, I've been shot at once by AAA. Uh, for somebody like Neil Armstrong, who had 80 combat missions, getting shot at a lot, and yet he still went and did it. And then when this country asked him to become an astronaut, and he knew that it was going to be a dangerous mission, he was still willing to do it. He was such a humble individual, I mean, and that's, that feeds back to his career, his life, and you look at what he accomplished, and yet, at the same time, he was uh, uh, not interested in taking, you know, any of the credit. He wanted to make sure that the thousands of people that supported all the efforts with, the, uh, with NASA and with the space program were given the credit. He was a pilot in VF-51, which was, uh, just happened to be the first squadron to have jet aircraft and they also were the first to take jet aircraft into combat. I flew with VF-154, which is the Black Knights. Uh, we flew Tomcats into combat in Iraq. And uh, I can tell you, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. And um, especially in his day and age, being the first to do it in jet aircraft, it took a lot of courage. The accomplishments of Mr. Armstrong really make me proud to be a naval aviator. The fact that he was a naval aviator, selected for the astronaut program, 
and then selected to go to the moon really show the talents that naval aviation brings to the ball game really shows what naval aviators can do and make me very proud to be part of that group everybody's career has things that they experience and highlights and you know this will certainly be you know one of the highlights of of my career and, and things that I've had a chance to uh, experience. Um, something I'll never forget. I only wish I could have been an astronaut, but you know, it's, it's a pretty amazing honor and uh, I just uh, am glad to have been a naval aviator and to have shared that legacy with him. Uh, it's inspiring to, to know that you know, you're, you're kind of walking in the footsteps of, of legends like that.